knee surgery. Well, it looks like we're ready for baseball. They've been taking the tarps off at uh, Riverfront Stadium. You see the pitchers there, Eric Hansen and Jeff Juden. Fourth Major League start for Jeff Juden. Now we go back to Riverfront to Cincinnati. Bring in Harry Callis. We're ready for baseball. Harry? All right, thanks, Neil. And Jeff Juden and Eric Hansen are completing their warm-up tosses. Juden is looking for his first Major League win. Lifetime, he is 0-3 in the big leagues. And two of his losses have come at the hands of Cincinnati. Of course, that was when he was with the Houston Astros, coming over from the Astros along with Doug Jones and the Mitch Williams deal. And Eric Hansen making his first National League start. On the left of your screen, Hansen coming over from the Seattle Mariners. Jim Fregosi and Bob Boone are bringing out the lineup cards for this afternoon's game as the umpires have assembled at the home plate area. Once the game starts, the weather conditions, the rains forecast for this afternoon, the game will be in the hands of the crew chief, John McSherry, this umpiring crew. Bob Boone, who many thought was going to be the manager of the Houston Astros, but he finished a close second to Terry Collins. And the opportunity to come here to Cincinnati as a coach and welcome that opportunity, especially with his son Brett, second baseman for the Reds. Bob's dad, Ray, played in the major leagues for a lot of years, mostly with Cleveland, a power hitter. And of course, Bob had a good career, mostly with the Phillies. And he has Brett here and Aaron on the way, and the, the youngest boy the Boons have, uh, Bob says might be better than all of them. How old is he? I believe he is in high school. I think he's, I think he's only 13, 14 years old. John McSherry, the crew chief, talking it over with Bob Boone and with Jim Fregosi here at Riverfront Stadium. Plays their home for the home opener tomorrow against the Colorado Rockies. Rockies have already been rained out of Pittsburgh. Same pitching matchup, though, for tomorrow. It'll be Danny Jackson against Mike Harkey. Marvin Freeman was supposed to start for Colorado today, but he will be scratched as the number five pitcher and Mike Harkey will pitch for the Rockies tomorrow. Darren Dalton hitting out of the three hole today. Dutch has hit out of the three hole before in his career. And he is tied for the league lead in walks. One of the things the Phillies have missed offensively the presence of John Cruck has been that on base percentage of the Crucker. Last year, Dalton knocked in over 100. Holland's close to 100. And Cabelia, career high number of RBIs. And a lot of that was because of the table setters, Lenny Dykstra and John Cruck, who always seemed to be on base. Just for the record, Matthew Boone is 14 years old, and he's in a high school in uh, San Diego playing baseball. Bob Boone also had a brother that played with the Kansas City Club for a short while. Bob's brother Rodney played with Kansas City in uh, the Houston systems. Reds have won the first two games of this series, of course, and the Phillies are trying to avert any kind of a sweep of the series. The Phillies were not swept a three-game series all of last year. The last time the Phillies were swept a three-game series was in 92. So a lot will fall on the broad young shoulders of Jeff Juden, the 23-year-old from Salem, Massachusetts, in this game today. Kind of a day it is here. It's cool, a little windy, and it's damp. 
There are quite a few Phillies fans here for this weekend series at Riverfront as the Cincinnati Reds are taking the field here. Weather keeping much of the crowd away this afternoon. Cincinnati at four and one. They lost on opening night. First game played in the major leagues last Sunday night. And they haven't lost since. They had one game rained out that was an 8 8 tie with St. Louis. Jim Fregosi's lineup for the Phillies this afternoon has Lenny Dykstra center fielder leading off. Mariano Duncan, first base, will bat second. Darren Dalton catching, hitting third. Dave Holland's third baseman bats fourth. Pete Ancavilla, left fielder, hitting fifth. Jim Eisenreich, the right fielder, bats sixth. Mickey Morandini at second base, hitting seventh. Kevin Stocker, the shortstop, bats eighth. And batting ninth and pitching Jeff Juden. That lineup is facing the 28-year-old right-hander, Eric Hansen. As Harry told you, he is coming from the American League. He had, he had a horrible spring. He had some arm problems in the middle of his arm in the flexor area throws a fastball a breaking ball a big curve ball and once in a while a change up defensively behind Hanson Tony Fernandez at third base Barry Larkin the shortstop Brett Boone at second and Hal Morris at first Joe Oliver doing the catching today in the outfield, Kevin Mitchell in left, Roberto Kelly in center, and Reggie Sanders in right. The umpires for this afternoon's game, Ed Montague will call the balls and strikes. Charlie Williams at first base, Gary Darling at second, and John McSherry at third. Montague must think a warm front's moving in here. Shirt sleeves. The Phil's back home tomorrow. Homestand will bring to Veterans Stadium the Colorado Rockies, the Cincinnati Reds, and the Los Angeles Dodgers. Harry Canson. In the spring game, we saw him in against the Phil's threw an awful lot of curveballs, just rarely threw his fastball, but he did have the muscle problem in his arm at that time. So he might be a little different today. That curveball has a big hump in it. It it breaks late, but it breaks quickly and it breaks quite a ways. So the hitters are going to have to the right hand hitters especially are going to have to stay with that pitch. Lenny Dystra will lead it off. Lenny hitting at 227. Hanson went to high school in New Jersey. He was an all-state basketball and baseball player at Heightston, New Jersey High School. And is in the New Jersey Sports Hall of Fame. Original second round pick of the Mariners in 89. High with a fastball, one ball and no strikes to Lenny Dykstra. Lifetime Hansen's 156, lost 54 in the major leagues. Two balls and no strikes. Right there for a called strike, two and one to Lenny Dykstra. speed pitch it's two and two call that a swing I believe and he tried to check didn't like the call
Their ball comes in low. It's a full count to Dykstra. going to get Dykstra. Lenny hit a couple of balls hard yesterday that were caught. But he legs this one out for an infield single and Dykstra a leadoff base runner. Larkin might have had him had he been able to get a handle on the ball right away but he just juggling around. He did make a good play though. That, that See that ball trickling around down there on the ground and that delay cost Larkin to play at first. Brings on Mariano Duncan. Dunk hitting a 350. One strike to Duncan. Duncan playing at first base today. Played some there in the spring. And he's stolen two bases so far this season. He hadn't been thrown out. Curveball is high. One ball and one strike. Duncan's among the league leaders and runs batted in, tied for fourth in the league in that department with seven of them. He hit two home runs at Colorado. Change up folding. One and two. That, that change up has a little sink to it. Watch it drop low and inside there. It's almost like a palm ball or something. Lenny Dystra, runner at first base. Nobody out here in the top of the first. Curveball hit sharply past Tony Fernandez into left field for a base hit. So the Phils have their first two men on base here in the first inning, and that will bring up Darren Dalton. That's what we mean by uh, staying with the curveball is, is exactly what Duncan did. He didn't give any ground at all. See that the big loop to that curve? You don't see that pitch very often. Darren Dalton is batting at 286. Tied for the league lead in walks with six and six in the league at on base percentage with a 500 on base percentage. One ball and no strikes. Two men on base. Nobody out. Fastball nailed to deep center field. Kelly is back. This ball's out of here. Center field home run. Darren Dalton. The Phillies jump to a three to nothing lead here in the first inning. It's a pretty good lineup. For, <laughs> really? for Gosey made out today. Yeah, really. <laughs> single, single, three run homer. Still nobody out. Dalton's second home run of the year. He's knocked in six now. The batter will be Dave Hollins. The ball's hit a long way out, out away from Dalton. The pitch, and that's exactly where he hit it. Hollins off to a great start. Dave hitting at 474, fourth in the league in hitting. Last ball is over for a called strike. Oh, 
Ground ball hit sharply, but add Morris. Morris will make the play himself. Hollins is retired for out number one in the inning. And it will bring up Pete Incavillo. Hollins hit that ball hard right on the line. I, Morris was just a couple of steps off the line and was able to make the play, but he, Hollins stung that ball. Incavillo homered in yesterday's game. He's hitting at 267. Smothers had fouled on the third base side. Now balls and a strike to Incavillo. up there for a ball one and one third ball one and two the count to Pete and Cabelia. Fastball and he missed it, struck him out. That's two down, and that'll bring up Jim Eisenreich. I think Avilia really in the spring was very selective and did not go after high pitches. As soon as the season started, he got into that habit of chasing the high pitch again. But he, he laid off that at spring training, of course, had a great spring. Eisenreich takes a strike. Eyes hitting a 316 in this ballpark. Lifetime, he's 14 for 23. Curveball bouncing up there. One ball to one strike to Jim Eisenreich. Change up, hit on the ground to Brett Boone. He throws Eisenreich out, and that'll retire the side. Bills put three on the board in the first. Three hits, no errors, and none left. Aaron Dalton, a home run. At the end of one half, Bills three, Cincinnati coming to bat. Davey Johnson's Cincinnati lineup this afternoon. Tony Fernandez, third baseman, leads off. Barry Larkin, shortstop, batting second. Hal Morris at first base, hits third. Kevin Mitchell, the left fielder, batting fourth. Reggie Sanders, the right fielder, hits fifth. Roberto Kelly, center fielder, batting sixth. Brett Boone, the second baseman, hits seventh. Joe Oliver catching, batting eighth, and batting ninth, and pitching Eric Hansen. That lineup facing Jeff Juden. Big Jeff Juden, six foot eight. 23 year older last year at Tucson 11 wins six losses made the club in spring training as the fifth starter defensively behind him Dave Hollins at third base Kevin Stocker at shortstop Mickey Morandini at second and Mariano Duncan at first base Darren Dalton doing the catching and in the outfield it's Pete Incavilli in left Lenny Dykstra in center and Jim Eisenreich in right switch hitting Tony Fernandez leads off Signed as a free agent at spring training by the Cincinnati Reds. Long time Gold Glove shortstop in the American League for Toronto. And the Reds picked him up to play third. One ball and no strikes to Tony Fernandez. Nothing.
struck him on four pitches. So Fernandez is a leadoff base runner. And the batter will be Barry Larkin. It's one thing you worry about with Juden is throwing strikes. Had a lot of strikeouts at AAA last year, but also led the Coast League in walks. Larkin is batting at 111. Off to a very slow start for this all star shortstop. Just missed a little bit low. He's not going to get those borderline pitches. He's had a couple of them. Ed Montague is, has always had a, he's a good umpire, but he's had a small strike zone, and that's not going to help Jeff Juden. First six pitches out of the strike zone. Two balls and no strikes. What he what he doesn't want to do is, you know, with a three run lead is walk the ballpark and looks like he's aiming the ball a little bit instead of throwing it. Might be a little nervous. First start for the Phillies. Three balls and no strikes to Barry Larkin. Three and nothing. Got that one over. Three balls and one strike to Larkin. Ooh. Runner breaky and that one just missed inside. He walked him back to back walks to Fernandez and Larkin. Johnny Padres will pay a visit to the mound. Al Morris will be the batter. Morris hitting at 333. He's been a tough out. Against the Phillies, lifetime a 375 hitter against the Phillies. Phillies have three on the board, but Juden's walked the first two red batters here in the bottom of the first. Morris is a lifetime 307 hitter. Celebrated his 29th birthday yesterday with a home run. That's 11 pitches thrown and just one strike thrown by Juden. Two balls and no strikes. Two and one. Morris hits the Phillies great, hits the Phillies better than anybody else. The Mets get him out. It's a 150 hitter against the Mets. Wow. Dodgers get him out. 243. Three balls and a strike. Mitchell waiting on deck. He has walked the 
base is loaded. Will not sit well with manager Jim Fregosi here. He's up off the chair and certainly doesn't want to go to his bullpen this early, but. Kevin Mitchell, he's hitting 316. Three homers and six RBIs. That one misses. Well, Fergosi is going to have to do something pretty soon. You just can't let that pitcher stay out there and throw. Balls. He's thrown two strikes to the first four hitters out of 15 pitches. Wonder what they keep saying to him. They had a lot of meetings. Looks like for Goose, he's gonna let him go. He's has nobody warming up. But he's starting to pace a little bit. One strike to Kevin Mitchell. He's ahead of Mitchell, nothing in two. Play the birthday wishes to Betty Kerr. Make a one ball and two strikes. Betty Kerr in Linwood, Pennsylvania. Betty's son Jack here at the ballpark today. Ground ball hit the shortstop. They'll get one. They turn the double play on a good scoop by Mariano Duncan. Under pressure, Morandini threw low, but Duncan, good scoop at first base. Now, Mitchell, uh, just a fair base runner, but that really didn't look like a double play. Hit it off the end of the bat. Morandini really turned that under some pressure from Morris. Good scoop there on the backhand. A run scores, no RBI on the double play, and the banner will be Reggie Sanders. That's got to give Juden a lift. Big lift. One strike, two Sanders. I don't know about Juden, it gave Fergosi a big lift. You know that. <laughs> no balls and a strike, two Sanders. Got that one over. He's ahead of Sanders, nothing and two with Larkin at third base. And two outs. Phil's lead three to one. One ball and two strikes. Dalton, two and two. Barry Larkin at third base with two outs. A run across. Phil's lead 3 1 here in the first inning. Center field, Larkin scores. It's a three to two ball game. The Reds come back with two of their own, and Roberto Kelly will be the batter. And a high fastball. That's the first base hit for Sanders in this series. But a big two out base hit. See him level off on that pitch over the middle of the plate and up a little. 
He wanted that pitch in is where he wanted it. Roberto Kelly, the batter, hitting at 231. Steal of the year for Reggie Sanders. Watch this jump he gets. Yeah, that's a, that's a tremendous jump. I don't think a perfect throw would have had him. One strike to Roberto Kelly. Took some off that pitch. Change up for a breaking ball. Now balls and two strikes. In the center field, a base hit by Kelly, and this game is tied at 3-3 three, three here in the first inning. Kelly will steal the base. This one is starting out like a wild one here at Riverfront. Jammed him a little bit on the pitch, hit it about on the trademark, but dumped it through the middle. Well, two of the three walks have scored, and of course the double play ball eliminated, eliminated one of those walks, but a double play ball sandwiched in there has saved a Huge inning. One strike, strike to Brett Boone, who's hitting at 308. He has hit safely in all four games that he's played. Cincinnati has made it a habit to score early. Of the 27 runs they have scored this year, 23 of them have come in the first four innings. Kelly looks like he wants to go. Especially now. Nothing in two to Boone. There's another hit. They're just lining him back through the middle. Three straight singles to center field. And the batter will be Joe Oliver. Well, he's throwing the strikes he's throwing right now. He's throwing up and over the heart of the plate. And those get hit. Some, some of them get hit a long way. Jim Fregosi is going to get bullpen activity. Mike Williams. Gets up in the Phillies bullpen. Two men on base with two outs for Oliver, who's hitting at 231. Runners going and no throw by Dalton. Didn't have a chance. They got such a big jump. If you take a chance now of intentionally walking Joe Oliver with Eric Hansen, an American League oh, pitcher, who no, hasn't... no, don't walk anybody else intentionally. <laughs> Probably, I don't know. He's walking too many unintentionally. Double steal. Juden obviously does not hold runners close. He'll work from the windup here. One strike to Joe Oliver. it out of play nothing in two the 
missing inside one ball and two strikes. has been called by Gary Darling, the second base umpire, and the Reds lead it four to three. What else can happen? This is a disastrous start for Jeff Juden. Phillies were hoping for a lot better. Two balls and two strikes. a wild pitch a good block by Dalton it's a full count Brett Boone the runner at third base Kevin Stocker fields and throws out Oliver and the Reds are finally retired but not before taking the lead with four runs three hits three walks and a balk and one man left after one four to three Cincinnati. After one inning of play at Cincinnati four and the Phillies three. Upcoming telecasts of Phillies baseball include the home opener tomorrow afternoon at 2 on Prism and Wednesday night's game with the Rockies at 7.30 on Sports Channel. Well, Mickey Morandini will lead it off for the Phils. Mickey is one out of five in the early going this year, hitting at 200. Wild first inning, Darren Dalton a three-run home run, and Jeff Juden walked the bases loaded. Then after a double play ground out, three straight singles and a balk, and Cincinnati got four back and lead it by a run. Leading it off for the Phils. Takes it high for a ball. Ground ball hit to Hal Morris. Morris to Hanson covering, and that's in time for out number one. That'll bring up Kevin Stocker. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Phillies and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without the express written consent of the Phillies. Stocker is getting a 200. All of his hits have come left-handed. He's 0 for 2 right-handed. One strike to Stocker. Two quick strikes to Kevin Stocker. There's that pitch. It's almost like a screwball the way it dips away. Probably it was a little too far outside. In the shallow left, Larkin a long run makes the running grab. Good play by Barry Larkin. He knew that his left fielder wasn't going to get it, and so Barry Larkin went flat out as fast as he could go right from the get go. 20. One nice thing about having a left fielder out there that don't cover a lot of ground he didn't, never runs into anybody one 
One strike to pitcher Jeff Juden. Juden is hitting left here. He's listed as a right hand hitter, but I think he's gone to switch hitting. He's nothing for five lifetime. He started that in uh, spring training, switch hitting. Ball and two strikes to Jeff Juden. Doesn't have a very good swing from either side. <laughs> he struck him out. Second strikeout for Hanson. Phillies down an order here in the second. No runs, hits, errors, and none left. We move to the bottom of the second. It's four to three, Cincinnati. Phil's open at Veterans Stadium tomorrow against the Rockies at 2.05. A very special day for celebration. Compliments of Pennsylvania's new 610 area code. If you haven't already purchased your tickets for the opening, sorry you're too late. This year's home opener has been sold out, but plan to be on hand for one of the other opening homestand games, including foot photo ball day on April 16th. Keychain with a replica of the NL championship ring on April 17th, both against Cincinnati and our first business person special. April 19th against the Dodgers. Four tickets order by calling 463-1000. Eric Hansen leads it off. Two quick strikes to Eric Hansen. Six eight, but he throws out Hanson. One down. That'll bring on Tony Fernandez. He walked and scored a run his first time up. Thirty eight pitches that he's thrown in the second inning here. It's a lot of pitches. Yep. One and nothing to Tony Fernandez. 35 in the first inning. In the air to right field. Eyes and right coming hard. And Dykstra wasn't sure Eyes he was going to get there. So Dykstra also coming hard. But Eyes and right makes the grab for out number two. Eisenreich kind of surrounded the ball. That's what confused Dykstra. And Eisenreich cut right in front of him. Lenny was hollering for it. Two down. It'll bring up Barry Larkin. Ground ball hit to Mickey Moore and Dini. Throws out Larkin and. Juden comes back strong after a very shaky first inning. No runs, hits, errors, and none left. At the end of two, 4-3 Cincinnati. Third inning is 4-3 Cincinnati. Our trivia question of the afternoon is brought to you by Dodge. Last year, Lenny Dykstra led the Phillies in games, at-bats, runs, and hits. Who was the last Philly before Dykster to accomplish that feat, leading the club in games, at bats, runs, and hits? Here is the dude to lead off for the Phils here in the third. He singled and scored a run his first time up. No strikes to Dykstra. Fastball on the inside corner for a strike, one and one. It's 
high with a fastball. Two balls and a strike to Dykstra. Slow. That looks like a screwball almost. It drops Maybe. down. Red's broadcaster said it was just a straight change. Maybe he does turn it over, but. Well, it's going down and away. Good play by Morris. Dykstra's really been picked in this series. He's hit some rockets that have been picked, and that's a fine play by Hal Morris for out number one. Yeah, Morris has really made some good plays. He hasn't had to move that much. He did dive on this one. Rolled away from him a little bit. Quick recovery and Reds have played very good defensive series here. Especially the infielders. Mariano Duncan singled his first time up. One strike to Duncan. on the Reds 90 World Championship team. Change up a ball and two strikes to Mariano Duncan. Showing the fastball inside might come back with that change up now. Two and two. Now is a fastball and Duncan lines it, but right at Reggie Sanders. Two down. It'll bring up Darren Dalton. He had a three-run home run his first time up. Saturday night when the Phillies take on the Cincinnati Reds of Veterans Stadium at 7.05. We have a great new giveaway item for all youngsters 14 and under. Photo balls featuring various Phillies players, compliments of Burger King. Best and easiest way to reserve your tickets, do it early by calling 463-1000 or stop by any one of the many local Ticketmaster outlets. Photo ball night on April 16th against Cincinnati at 7.05. Curveball for a strike, one strike to Dalton. Another curveball. Another one that's low, one ball and two strikes. Change up low. Two and two to Dalton, two outs and no base runners here in the third. The Reds lead four to three. Strikes on a fastball on the inside corner, the third strikeout for Hanson. No runs, hits, errors, and none left. We go to the bottom of the third, 4 3 Cincinnati. Today's game is brought to you in part by Budweiser. Beachwood Age for a crisp, clean, classic taste. 
by your Quality Plus Ford dealers who invite you to test drive the brand new 1994 Mustang Convertible. And by the Pennsylvania Lottery. Lottery proceeds benefit older Pennsylvanians. Al Morris leads it off for Cincinnati here in the bottom of the third. Our trivia question of the afternoon is brought to you by Dodge. Last year, Lenny Dykstra led the Phils in games, at bats, runs, and hits. Who was the last Philly before Dykstra to accomplish that feat? Has to be Dave Cash. Good guess. Incorrect, huh? Incorrect, however. This man is still playing in the major leagues. Still playing? Playing for those Detroit Tigers. I ought to know that then. Yeah. Ball and two strikes to Morris, who walked his first time up. Well, I'd like to know who it is, Harry. Our ground ball shortstop Kevin Stocker throws out Morris one down. How quickly they forget that one sound well. Sammy's been playing for Sparky Anderson. Non roster invitee to the Tigers camp and earned a spot with a big club. Mitchell grounded into a double play his first time up. Foul tip for a strike. Bouncing ball to shortstop Kevin Stocker retires Mitchell. Two down here in the third, and that'll bring up Reggie Sanders. It's the same pitcher we saw in the first inning. Yeah, he settled down the first inning. Juden walked three, committed a balk, gave up three hits. Sanders singled his first time up to drive in a run. Just missing. One ball and no strikes. He committed at a low breaking ball, one and one. Avilia makes the grab and that will retire the side. No runs, hits, errors, and none left. Andy Musser and Chris Wheeler join you in the fourth at the end of three. It's 4-3 Cincinnati. A great gift to remember the spectacular 93 season by a free keychain with a replica of the 93 NL championship ring on and it's free for all children 14 and under compliments of Subway on Sunday April 17th. The number to call for your tickets 463 1000 or stop by one of the many local Ticketmaster outlets. So we had all the scoring in the first inning and now we move to the fourth and it's still four to three Cincinnati as Dave Hollins leads it off for the Phillies. Hollins made the first out in the ball game when he grounded out to first base. Dave's been off to a torrid start though. He came into the game today with a 560 on base percentage. You can't do a whole lot better than that. 
Now he's really been off to a good offensive start. He's one of the few Phillies that have really been consistent since the start of the season. That's why Fergosi shook up the lineup a little bit today, put Dalton in the three hole because they just haven't been scoring runs here in this series. In Colorado, you score them by accident. Well, that is so true. It's uh, most of the team was anxious to get out of Colorado and get into what they call a real ballpark. One ball, one strike on Dave. Fergosi moving Dalton into the three hole and sitting Ricky Jordan down today, playing Mariano Duncan at first. Pitch in for a strike, one and two on Dave. And the possibility that John Cruck could be in the lineup tomorrow for the home opener. We say possibility, certainly it's a fact that John will be there and will receive his ring. John playing today at Reading. Well, Hanson fools uh, Collins there. Dave did not have a good swing at that at all. Looked like it might have been a changeup. He, he's throwing his breaking ball really well since the first inning. That's a changeup. A straight change, and you can see it go down and away from Dave Hollins, and it did really fool him. Fastball, curveball, changeup so far from Hanson. Here's Incavilia struck him out too, but that was on a high fastball. Hansen did not make his uh, first start for the Reds because he had fl uh, the flu that day. He was supposed to go against the Cardinals on Wednesday and got scratched. Ball on a strike on Incavilia. Pete had the best spring of any of the Phillies. But since the season began, he seems to be pressing just a little. Well, he's chasing the high fastball. And that's a pitch they're going to get him out on. Broken bat looper. It's sinking. It is a base hit. So Incavilia trades a bat for a base hit. Phillies hit number four in the game. Incavilia at first with one away. The hitter will be Jim Eisenreich. Eisenreich in his first at bat today grounded to second. Reds infield looking for a double play. Hansen had retired 10 batters in a row before that hit, and here's another one. Incavilia is heading for third base. Here's Sanders' throw on the fly, but it's offline. Single by Eisenreich sends Incavilia to third. A lot of people think Incavilia is a big, slow guy. He is not. He runs very, very well, especially for a man that size. And he read that very well off the bat. He knew where Reggie Sanders was in right field, that he was playing very deep, and that he had to go to his left a little bit. And Sanders makes a strong throw here, but it's offline. And he knew Sanders was going to have to make a perfect throw to get him. Uh, and that was a good base running gamble by Incavilia, and it turned out positive for him. Now the Reds put the infield at double play depth here. Mickey Morandini, the hitter, the tying run at third base for the Phillies, who trail it 4 3. <laughs> Fouled sharply, scattered him down there in the Phillies bullpen. That had Boa diving for cover, and then them down there in the bench area. The bullpen is on the other side of the dugout. Morandini grounded out to Morris, uh, the first baseman, his first time up. Eisenreich has stolen two bases. You don't think of Jim as a base stealer, but he has two already and has not been caught. came out and got three quick runs today but the Reds answered right back and they lead by one bounces away from Oliver here comes Incavilia tie ball game down to second goes Eisenreich on a wild pitch Hanson was trying to make a perfect pitch then with a breaking ball to Morandini and he bounced it up there and Oliver wasn't able to control it bounce well away from Incavilia could score easily here you'll see the curveball in the dirt and it just oh it changed direction see how it had the reverse spin yeah. on it mm -hmm. that's what a breaking ball will do it'll go the opposite direction and um, 
Oliver really had very little chance to block that one very well. So Inky's broken bat single has turned into the tying run. One and one on Morandini. Phillies a chance to get more here now with a runner at second and still only one out on the inning. Hanson now with men on base is, is really pulling that breaking ball as opposed to he was real relaxed before he's just kind of getting it over. Now he's really yanking it it looks like and that's why he's starting to bounce him a little more. And Oliver battles that pitch. It's three and one, and he wants to talk to his hurler. Well, it's a lot easier to throw that pitch when there's no men on base. And that's what all of a sudden has happened to him with men on. He's trying to make the perfect pitch. Joe Oliver had the day off yesterday. Brian Dorsett was the uh, Cincinnati catcher yesterday, and he had a big RBI single that had the Reds ahead most of the afternoon. Three one. Morandini chases a an off speed pitch. It's a full count on Mickey. Change up. You know Eric Hansen uh, has come over from the American League, and uh, that's an American League style right there. Just throw a three one change up. Nothing wrong with it. But a lot of hitters in this league swing fastball, and that's what Morandini did. Three two pitches skied in the air to shallow center on comes the center fielder Kelly cat falls off but he makes the catch. That's the second out of the inning as Morandini flies out and Stocker will bat. three one change up three two curveball. Now Oliver's on his way to the mound to talk to Hanson. Uh, they saw Juden's weak at bat his first time up so they certainly don't want to let Stocker hurt him here. Yeah they, and Stocker has to be mindful of that too because. With first base open, uh, he's not going to see much to hit. Stocker out on a pop up first time up. It was a good running catch by Larkin. Are they going to talk some more? Well, that's Larkin, and oh, they're going to walk him. They're going to make it to go. They're going to go ahead and walk him with four. That's amazing. Uh, it, it really surprised you to see that here in the in the fourth inning. Well you know it's like you and I were saying they were virtually going to do it anyway and Stocker's no dummy so why not just go ahead and, and walk it. Well because hitters are going to chase pitches a lot of times I, you know in my opinion you don't walk Kevin Stocker here in the fourth inning but because you give the Phillies an advantage or you turn the lineup over Lee Dykstra off in the fifth but that's Davey Johnson's way of doing it some managers like to do it some don't. It is the first walk of the afternoon for Hanson and he will get. Jeff Juden up there and I, I assume that Juden will again be batting left handed. Huh? Well yeah he, he batted left handed in spring training but it was almost always in bunting situations. He's listed as a right handed batter. Um, and we saw the swings that he had his first time up and. He doesn't swing the bat real well left handed either. Here he is struck out first time around one of four that Hansen. Has recorded in the ball game. Key is he's real settled down in this game though after a bad first inning. He has, and he takes a call strike. It's a 4 4 tie at this point. Two on and two out as the Phillies bat in the fourth. That's a base hit for Juden. Here's Eisenreich coming around. Here's Mitchell's throw cut off. And a run scores. They've got a man in a run down here, and it's Stocker who is tagged out to win the inning. But the run counts, and the Phillies lead the ball game. <laughs> the Phillies get two runs, three hits, and one man left on base. And the Phillies are up 5 4. Good afternoon. I'm Neil Hartman with a sports break. Seven games in the American League this afternoon. First, it's Boston trailing Chicago 1 0 in the third. Kansas City out in front of Cleveland in the third. Oakland 6 3 uh, in front of Minnesota in the fourth. In the fifth, California out in front of Milwaukee. Detroit and New York deadlocked at two in the sixth. Texas out in front of Baltimore 6 4 in the fifth. And look what Toronto's doing to Seattle 12 4. The score there, they're in the sixth. Phillies have just taken the lead. It's now 5 4. We go to the bottom of the fourth to Andy and Wheels. Okay, and let's take a look at that last play again, Wheels, and we'll have a chance to see how Stocker gets himself in the rundown here. This is a good base running play. Juden gets a base hit to left field. Now, the runner coming from second to third, you want to make the fielder cut that ball off to make sure you get the run out of it. 
Stocker did that. Now he's in the rundown. They tag him out, and the Phillies get the go-ahead run. But a base runner wants to try and have that happen if possible. So for the second time, the Phillies have handed Jeff Juden a lead. Here's Roberto Kelly, and he takes a strike. Kelly got an RBI single back in the first inning off an 0-2 pitch, and then he scored on a balk. But now it's 5-4 Phillies in the bottom of the fourth. One and one. Be interesting to see how Juden reacts now. They, they have a lead. He helped give himself a lead. He sure did, and he has retired seven batters in a row. Two balls and a strike. A lot of times the key to a ball game, key to pitching, is how you react after your team gives you the lead. Can you come back out and shut down the opposition? Big game in, in uh, Denver the other day was when Munoz came out and did that. David West did the same thing in game one in that series. Back and out of play. Two balls and two strikes on Kelly. He'll be followed by Boone and Oliver. Well, those Rockies got rained out today. They'll be at Veterans Stadium tomorrow for the Phillies home opener at 2.05. Marvin Freeman was scheduled to work for them today, so his turn will be bypassed. Out in the right center field area, Dykstra calls, and Lenny catches. Kelly is out, one down. Jeff Juden just made a good pitch on Roberto Kelly. And he's getting the ball down on the strike zone a little bit now. Looks like he's following through and finishing his pitches. Where in the first inning, he was feeling for everything. He was just kind of throwing the ball, had no idea where it was going. In the first, Brett Boone singled and stole a base. On an 0-2 pitch. See, that's in for down. a strike. Those pitches, those fastballs are down, and that's because you can see his arm really coming through now, and he's driving into his pitches. Big guy, he's 6'8", so when he really gets behind him, he can throw hard. Yeah, and he has to use his legs and really follow through with his pitches to get the ball down, and he has tremendous leverage when he, when he has good mechanics. And Boone's got that big swing. That pitch was down. It's one ball and two strikes on Boone. Boone has some power. Even though he, you know, you look at his body, you don't think he's a big guy. Last year combined between Seattle and Calgary, he had 20 homers, 94 runs batted in, and 30 doubles. Juden gets his first strikeout of the afternoon. Business person special coming up against the Dodgers on Tuesday the 19th the 105 start always great to get out in the middle of the week and see baseball under the sun the business person specials are a hot ticket so make your plans in advance call 463 1000 see the Phillies and the Dodgers Tuesday the 19th Joe Oliver swings through a pitch those games are going to begin as you said at 105 this year as opposed to 12:35 in the past. Players think that's going to make a big difference an extra half hour. The players, uh, yeah, they wanted it a little bit later if at all possible, and the Phillies said fine. Foul tip, and it's nothing and two on Oliver, who grounded out to short his first time up. Off the right side, out of play. Juden's in pretty good groove right now. It's hard to believe it's the same guy who, who started the way that he did. He was so close to being out of this game in the first inning. Sure, they had Mike Williams up in the bullpen, and Patience was running thin in the dugout. Bounces, one ball and two strikes. That was a breaking ball they just held on to too long. He's trying to make a... A real good pitch down and away, and he wound up bouncing it. Oliver just got a piece of that, one and two. You know, the uh, Reds have only three hits today. They got them consecutively back in the first inning, but they've gotten none since. Juden has retired 11 straight batters. Here's a ground ball for Stocker. Kevin's throw is in time and another one two three inning. We finished four this afternoon. Phillies lead the Reds five four.
Tigers how they scored a lot of it coming in the first inning the Phillies went base hit base hit and then a three run home run by Darren Dalton in the bottom of the first inning Juden walked the bases loaded Mitchell scored a run with a double play ball then RBI hits by Sanders and Kelly and then Juden balked in a run and the Reds were up four to three Phillies took the lead in the fourth inning when they got a run on a wild pitch by Hanson and then Jeff Juden singled to left to knock in the fifth run of the ball game and put the Phillies ahead five to four that's where we stand Andy heading into the fifth inning OK wheels and here's the top of the order to come around and try to add to it Lenny Dykstra will lead it off Lenny is one for two today got a hard infield single first time up and then was on base when Dalton hit that three run homer last time he grounded out to Morris Morris robbed him of a hit his last time up. Catches the inside corner for a strike. Yesterday was one of those rare games where Lenny was not on base four times up and did not reach. Back through the middle base hit for Dykstra and the inning is underway as Lenny leads off with a single. Lenny had two very unlenny like games uh, in this series today he really looks locked in. He's having good at bats. He's hit the ball hard three times, and he looks like he's really playing his game today. That was a fastball away, and he just hit it right back through the middle. Hit number seven in the game for the Phillies, and Mariano Duncan. Duncan off to a great start. He's batting at 364 right now, one for two today. Lenny has a pair of stolen bases, has not been caught. Everybody was worried about the fact that Lenny wasn't doing much in spring training but if it happens again next year not to worry. That's that's Lenny. Well he's not going to steal bases in spring training either. He just Lenny doesn't like spring training. I mean Lenny Dykstra is the kind of person that has to count for him to really get focused and really get into something. I mean he likes action and this counts. Mm -hmm. So all of us you know so he's going to play well but spring training he's never going to be a good spring training player. And yet he's one of the most eager guys to get there oh, and get sure. it going. I mean, Lenny's always anxious for the next thing to yeah. happen. Well, Lenny has a lot of childlike qualities about him, you know. And I think that's a, he, he's very impatient. Boy, what a player he is. There's a pitch out, but Lenny was not going. Phillies don't run a whole lot or play hit and run a whole lot. Um, Jim Fergosi just doesn't feel that he has that type of baseball team. Uh, they score a lot of runs by walking and by having big innings home runs extra base hits you're not going to see them run a whole lot. It was a curveball hit deep to left field fair or foul foul ball. Duncan just missed a two run home run. Hanson's curveball was hittable. Right, it was sitting up there waiting for him to hit it, and it, it was hooking the whole time, and it just went foul. There you see it. Look for a while, like it might catch the screen on the way out, but it just kept on going foul. One ball and two strikes on Mariano Duncan. Nobody out of the inning. Shows you how strong Duncan is too once in a while. Mariano's not a home run hitter, but he can hit some homers. Call out on strikes. That's a pitcher's pitch. Perfect pitch. Yeah, he made a great pitch on him. Duncan thought he was going to get something middle in again. And that's where he's looking. And Hansen goes with a fastball outside corner. Perfect pitch. Strikeout number five for Hansen, who gets the first out of the inning and now must face Darren Dalton. He struck him out last time, but Darren had a three run home run in his first time up today. Close, but it missed. Dalton's home run went to dead center field, just a little bit to the left of straightaway center, a line drive that just cleared the yellow line.
Dykstra safe. And Dalton today occupying the number three spot in the batting order. That spot normally filled by John Cruck. And we'll see whether John's going to be available tomorrow or not. The Phillies have a decision to make on that. John will be at the ballpark tomorrow. That's for sure, though. It's not a running situation for Lenny Dykstra because of Dalton being the batter, and they want to leave the hole for him, especially with one out, and he might be able to get a first and third out of it. It's that big hole on the right side for Dalton. And this guy's an off-speed pitcher. So Dalton has might get a pitch he can hook right in the hole and get Dykstra over to third. Low and inside. Two balls and a strike on Darren. Eric Hansen making his National League debut. He was supposed to pitch against St. Louis last Wednesday, but they scratched him because of the flu. Hit hard and a base hit. Didn't go to the right side, but Dykstra's going to third anyway. How about that? Dalton has his second hit of the ball game, and the Phillies get their first and third. Well, Lenny that made a good base running play. You know, a lot of teams will run on Lenny because he doesn't throw all that well. Well, Mitchell can't throw very well from left field. So even though this ball's hit hard, Dykstra's not running, and it's hit hard at Mitchell. Dykstra sees that Mitchell was not real aggressive uh, at it on that wet turf and he knows that he's not going to probably have a chance to throw him out so he gets a third very good base running play by Lenny Dykstra. See Mitchell lay back on it. That's what a base runner looks for. So here's Dave Hollins in an RBI situation first and third one out. Dave is 0 for 2 today. Holds the swing but takes a called strike. And Dave doesn't think so. Phillies are ahead 5-4, trying to add to it in the fifth. Reds infield playing for two. Holland swings through a pitch. 0-2 on Dave. Another off-speed pitch from Eric Hansen. It was a changeup. You see Dave Hollins was way out in front of it. He has pretty good motion with his changeup because he's kind of funky. Fast ball it and it hit him. <laughs> Dave, you know, with him, you never know because he doesn't move an inch. I mean, most batters will give you a reaction. He gives you none, and the bases are loaded. Now, Davey Johnson's annoyed as many managers are want to know, hey, he didn't move. He didn't try to get out of the way. Never does. You could hear him just yell at Eddie Montague about that, that he didn't move. He gave no attempt to get out of the way. Here it is. Hanson just trying to come inside. Hits him right on the tricep. He probably didn't even feel it. <laughs> so the bases are loaded with Phillies for Pete Incavilia. Inky got a broken bat hit last inning, and that led to the Phillies getting what at that time was the tying run. Pop foul back out of play. Look like the Reds are going to get some bullpen action here, Wheels. Chuck McElroy is wandering down there. And I believe he's going to start to throw, and there's a visit to the mound right now. Pitching coach is Don Gullett. And Phillies fans remember Don Gullett from the big red machine of the 70s. Boy, was he a tough left-handed pitcher. Pitched game number one of the league championship series in 76 against the Phillies. Later went on to the Yankees and got hurt with New York and was never the same pitcher after that. There's Chuck McElroy, who was in the Phillies system at one time. Indeed, he was traded for the wild thing. Eve of the season three years ago. It's ironic, but the three players in that deal, none of them are with their teams anymore. Bob Scanlon is now with Milwaukee. Right. And McElroy is here, and of course, Mitch is with Houston. Let's pause here for station identification, the Phillies Television Network. You're watching Phillies Baseball on WPHL-TV, Philadelphia. Incavilia pops one up. It's foul, and there will be no room for Oliver to come back. 
No balls and two strikes on Incavilia batting with the bases loaded and one out. Hanson's get, gotten ahead of two hitters now 0 and 2 but then he hit Hollins. Now he's ahead of Incavilia 0 and 2. I think a hitter has to feel a little pressure when he's up there with a runner at third. Less than two out you know the run is supposed to be driven home. Easier said than done. That's the second time that Incavilia has struck out. And he got him to chase a high fastball for the second time. Set him up with off speed stuff to get ahead then throws the high fastball and he chases it. So now there are two outs in the inning. It's up to Jim Eisenreich to get something out of this bases loaded spot here. Eisenreich singled and Eisenreich scored the go ahead run on Jeff Juden's single last inning. High a ball. One of the th things the Phillies did really well last year was pick each other up. And actually they've done that quite a few times already this young season. Coming into the ball game today, Phillies pitchers were hitting 364, and actually that's been helped because Juden's one for two today. They haven't all been pretty, but they've all counted. Yeah. And Schilling's hits yesterday. Schilling was chirping on the bus coming out today about that bunny guy. Stopped by Hansen. What a stop. That was headed up the middle. Phillies in the fifth, no runs, two hits, bases left loaded. Phillies lead it 5 4. Today's game is brought to you by the AT&T Business Advantage. Let it work for you. The Yellow Pages, 9 out of 10 people use the genuine Bell Atlantic Yellow Pages. And by your Philadelphia Mazda dealer. Reds are going to uh, go out here and pinch hit for their pitcher Eric Hansen at this point. They're going to send Lenny Harris out to bat. A couple of Phillies fans here at the ballpark. They said before the game uh, that they wanted Hansen throw about 100 pitches because, uh, as we mentioned earlier, Andy, he had had what a, a flexor problem with his shoulder, I think, and then he uh, then he was out with the flu, so he really hasn't pitched that much for the Reds. So they get five innings out of him. They're going to take him out of here. He threw 80 pitches in the ball game. Here's the 29 year old left handed batting infielder Harris. Harris does not have a hit so far this year. No hits in two at bats. His spot hadn't come up in the batting order in this inning. Maybe they would let him go one more. Harris was with the Dodgers last year. He hit 238 in Los Angeles with two homers and 11 runs batted in. Looks like we're going to see Pete Shirk as you look at Hanson there on the bench after his first National League appearance. Yeah, the Reds just acquired Shorek from the New York Mets the first day the Phillies arrived in town. Back past the mound, fielded there by Morandini, and Harris is out. One down in the fifth. That's 11 in a row retired by Jeff Juden after that rocky first inning. Davy Johnson, Ed Montague, and Hanson were in a rather animated discussion between innings, and that probably stem from Holland's not moving out of the way or attempting to moving out of the way of that pitch and uh, they were voicing their displeasure to Montague you just saw there. Tony Fernandez has walked and flied to right. There it is. Hanson wants to know well don't they have to move in this lake. Well, that is the rule isn't it. I mean officially you're supposed to try to get out of the way of a pitch. Right. Make some effort. I think the other side of the coin though is that a batter is saying well now I'm in my stance if he throws at me and hits me in my stance I'm not moving into the pitch I'm just in my stance that's my part of the plate. You don't see many guys say there. No, you don't. Though. In fact, he's the only one that I can think of that doesn't move a muscle. 
that caused that fight at Veterans Stadium a couple years ago when that happened with Scanlon. And then Scanlon threw at Dave Hollins the next time up. Strike two call. It's a full count now on Fernandez trying to, to beg his way on as he did in the first inning. Juden walked the bases loaded in the first. No walk since. On the ground to shortstop. Stocker over in time and Fernandez is out. Pretty good job by Juden to come back from 3-0. 12 in a row retired by Juden. Barry Larkin has walked and grounded to second base. The way Juden was throwing in the first inning today, what would have been the odds that he would then go on and work three successive one, two, three innings following and into a fourth? <laughs> I mean, really? Not good. Not good. Not likely. So it's obvious that he was nervous at the outset. And there's no surprise about that. One and one on Larkin, who got the big hit here Friday night to win the game in the 10th inning for Cincinnati. Call him the, the big dog here. I always thought that was supposed to be reserved for Shotzi 0 2. <laughs> or Glenn Robinson. Yeah. Grounded up the middle, but there is Morandini. He makes the play, and that's 13 in a row, retired by Juden. At the end of five, it's 5 4 Phillies. Sunday, May 1st, the Phillies and the Giants at 135. It's another birthday celebration for the Fanatic, and all children 14 and under receive a terrific cap. Featuring the Fanatic on the front, compliments of Tasty Cakes. Make sure that you make your plans early to come out for this always festive day. Get your tickets easily by phone by calling the Phillies at 463-1000. Pete Shurek makes his Cincinnati debut now. The left-hander takes over here in the sixth inning with the Phillies holding a 5-4 lead. And this is what Shurek did last year. He was a member of the New York Mets. Those numbers, of course, are not impressive in any way. And actually, according to what we read in the paper, the Reds scouted him off what he did the year before because he had a bad spring, too. He was a 7.91 earned run average this spring for New York. They also desperately needed another left-handed pitcher. So when he became available on the waiver wires, the, they claimed him, and he's over here now. Morandini will lead off the inning for the Phillies. Morandini, Stocker, and Juden. You think Juden will be up there left-handed again? I, I can't wait to see. <laughs> Well, he got, he got an RBI hit that way last time up. Morandini takes it low a ball. Churik is 24 years of age out of Austin, Texas. That earned run average for him last year with the New York Mets, 5.96, was the highest in Mets history for a pitcher who worked at least 100 innings. Phillies talked to the Mets a little bit uh, during the offseason. They were interested in Ricky Jordan at one time, and Shurik's name came up, but the Phillies did not want to trade Jordan for Shurik. Shurik runs a 3-1 count on the first hitter. Shurik is 6'5", 205 pounds. Morandini 0 for 2 today, ground ball and fly ball. He walked him. Morandini draws a walk. That's the first legitimate walk in the game. The Reds walked Stocker intentionally in the fourth. That was the only batter that Hansen walked. Now Stocker will bat right-handed. Stocker has popped up and received that intentional walk. This would only be a bunt situation with Stocker if you were going to hit for Juden. And the Phillies obviously will not hit for Juden here, so Stocker will be trying to get on some other way and not bunting. Or giving himself up. Shurik having a little trouble of his own finding the strike zone here.
Ball and a strike on Stocker. We've been lucky that the rain has stayed away here this afternoon. They've been calling for quite a bit of rain here in the Cincinnati area today, and we did have considerable rain this morning. Two and one. See how Oliver react to his breaking ball, then. You're dealing with a situation where a catcher and pitcher are new to each other, and he doesn't really know the movement, and the movement on that slider almost fooled Oliver. He almost didn't catch it. Broke a little more than he thought it was going to. Normally, when you get a new pitcher, you work with him on the side, but just getting him uh, Friday, I'm sure they didn't have time to work together. Two balls and two strikes on Stocker. Phillies batting in the sixth. They're ahead 5 4. Juden is taking his swings down there in the on deck circle, right handed. It's practice swings. Well, that, that must be the answer. Runner left early. Here's Morris's throw. He's a dead duck, is Morandini. Larkin takes the throw. Morandini's trying to make something happen there and steal a base on his own. But Shurik senses it, throws over there. Morris made a perfect throw to Larkin, and they nail him. And there's the advantage of having that left-handed first baseman. He gets the angle on the throw automatically. Two balls and two strikes on Stocker. Fielded by John Vukovic. Slick fielding third baseman. For the Reds at one point. That's right. In fact, the year that John played more games than any other was here in Cincinnati. It was the year that uh, he was supposed to be their everyday third baseman. They wound up making Rose a third baseman and Foster an outfielder. Right down the right field line, out of play. Fook really made George Foster's career. Because <laughs> they were trying to find a place to play George Foster back in those days. And uh, John started the season as a third baseman, and then Rose came in from the outfield, played third. Fook went to the bench, and Foster played the outfield and became a most valuable player. Foster went on to have a 52 home run year. Yep. Look out, they had, that had him ducking. Mariano Duncan was ducking down behind the screen. Atlanta out in front again. They got two in the first at Los Angeles. Dodgers now batting 2 nothing Braves. Think they'll lose a game, Wheels? <laughs> Glavin and Hershiser today. In the air to Foster, or to, unless you got me talking, <laughs> Mitchell. <laughs> Stocker to Mitchell. <laughs> Well, he looks a little like him, doesn't he? <laughs> well, they both have great power, that's for sure. Boy, they sure do, <laughs> or did, in the case of Foster. Now Jeff Juden, and he will bat right-handed. Base is empty, two away. Juden has struck out and got an RBI single to left. Phillies pitchers this year are 5 for 13. Ryan Klesko has a home run. So that's uh, how Atlanta got ahead in that game. A strike on Juden. Phillies lead 5 4, but how about the hit total? Phillies 8, Reds 3. All three of those Reds hits in the first inning. Hey, Juden has a bat up there as if he thinks he can hit. And he's got pine tar all over it. There's nicks on it. That's not one of those pristine bats you see a pitcher take up there a lot of times. Curveball got him looking. So Shurik, despite the walk, walks a one, two, three inning. And we go to the bottom of the sixth, five, four, Philly. <laughs> Phillies baseball brought to you by Budweiser, Beachwood Age for a crisp, clean, classic taste. Bell Atlantic Mobile, a mobile phone is only as good as the system it's on. Choose Bell Atlantic Mobile. Andy Muster with Chris Wheeler. We move to the bottom half of the sixth inning. And the Phillies have a 5-4 lead. Turned out to be not that bad a day here in Cincinnati today. Reds fans look a little bit bored right now. They've 
been accustomed to success in the first couple of games of this series. Jeff Juden has been mowing them down. 13 in a row retired by Jeff since a rocky first inning. Got the middle of the lineup here. The three, four, five hitters. Morris, Mitchell, and Sanders. Morris has walked and grounded to short. Morris did not take the bat off his shoulders in the first inning when he drew a four pitch walk. Here's a ball hit to Incavilia. Over his head. Gets by him on the bounce. Morris to second base with a double. First hit for the Reds since the opening inning. Now Morris looks for the ball away and he got one away and he really drove this one. Incavilli got a little bit close to the wall here. It was a breaking pitch. And you can see he thinks he has a chance to catch it. Now he gets close to the wall and the ball caroms past him. And when it does that, it allowed Morris to go to second. Might have gotten to second anyway, although Incavilli is a pretty good arm. He, he might have been able to hold him to a long single as hard as Morris hit that. Batter is Mitchell. He is grounded to short twice. One of them was a double play ball. Fouls it back. Slocum starting to warm up for the Phillies now. Morris has a huge lead off second. Not a guy who necessarily is going to run, but Juden needs to at least look at him. Keep him a little bit closer because they ran on him back in that first inning. There's Heathcliff loosening in a hurry. Second time the Phillies have had bullpen action. Back in the first inning, they had Mike Williams up. Now Juden glances back. Catches the corner with that pitch. Mitchell does not like it. Mitchell stands close to the plate, not as close as he used to, and he thinks his ball's outside, and he's right, it was. Swing and a miss. Mitchell strikes out. Juden's second strikeout. First out of the inning. Fooled him with a breaking ball. Yes. Really off speeded him that time. See, Mitchell's pulling off a little bit. Juden, I don't think, wants that ball that far inside. Darren Dalton was trying to reach for it before it got there. <laughs> but he got Mitchell to swing through it. In steps Reggie Sanders. He is one for two today. RBI single in the first. Lined out to Incavilia to end the third. Nicky Morandini moving in to keep Morris a little closer at second. Sanders takes outside ball one. Sanders a guy who has all the tools. Can run throw field hit for power and hit for average. His average right now 350. Inside ball two. When Sanders first came up, they had him playing center field. He didn't seem particularly comfortable there, there, and he seems a lot more at ease in right field. 78 pitches for Juden, but 35 of them came in the first inning. That's where he has to be careful now, because Reggie Sanders is going to sit on a 2-0 fastball here to drive. Right down the middle. Two and one. I think Reggie probably Andy was looking for a middle end location, which was good discipline for him there because the ball was away from him. Stands way off the plate and really goes into the pitch. And that one catches the corner. Juden starting to get some calls now, which can only help him. Yeah, he would have never gotten those pitches in the first no inning when way. he was all over the place. But You're now right. Montague is starting to, to give him the outside part of the plate. He's expanded his strike zone. You know, that's maybe outside also, but he is starting to get those pitches. Marvin Freeman celebrating a birthday today. Marvin's 31. Ball three. Good idea. I mean, they went away from him quite a bit and then tried to come back inside, but he just missed inside. Full count here on Sanders. The Reds have the tying run at second base. Phillies lead 5 4.
Myers hits it to left. And Cavillia is there. That ball was really sinking on him at the last minute, wasn't it? Oh. Sanders has lined out for the second out of the inning, and that was kind of scary. That was a high pitch, and, and he tomahawked it a little bit, and it had top spin. And Cavillia thought this ball was a riser, and it was a sinker. Ooh. And he barely caught it. I, I don't know how he caught that ball, because you ran past it, and it had all that sink coming down on it. Well, there are two outs. And Roberto Kelly will bat. One for two today, RBI single in the first. Morris double to lead off the inning. He's still at second. There's a strike. One thing, Juden was starting everybody with ball one early, and now he's coming back with strike one. With his fastball and his breaking ball. <laughs> Runner Morris was well off second. Dalton almost threw through. Morris read that pitch that Dalton was not going to handle it and he was going to get the third. Reds did a little running early. They stole three bases in the first inning today. Juden had about everything you could imagine go wrong in that first inning. He did everything wrong except commit an error. He balked. Up through the middle, base hit. Morris is going to score the tying run of the game. It's a 5-5 game on a single by Roberto Kelly. Breaking ball looked like up and out over the plate. Here comes Fergosi. And probably make a pitching chase. See, there's a high slider, and Roberto Kelly hits it back through the middle. With Kelly a base stealing threat, Andy, I think they'll probably make a change here now because they don't want Kelly stealing a base and getting into scoring position. The hitter will be Brett Boone. By the way, we, Gene Dias just uh, gave us uh, some word on John Kruk. We'll give it to us when we get back. Right now, we're going to make a pause here for a pitching change and a 5-5 game. We'll be right back. Travel arranged through U.S. Air offering daily nonstop service between Philadelphia and Mexico City. Nonstop to Mexico City. U.S. Air begins with you. Juden out of the ball game now. Juden cannot win the game. He could conceivably be the loser if Heathcliff Slocum can't hold him down here. The Reds have a runner at first with two outs as Slocum makes his third appearance. Heathcliff won two ball games in the series at Colorado and has not given up a run in an inning and two thirds. Slocum acquired from the Cleveland Indians during the offseason for Ruben Amaro Jr. Slocum 27 years of age from Jamaica New York. Talking about those quotes from John Cruck he went 0 for 3 today playing four innings in light rain at Reading without any physical problems. John said after the game I think I'm ready for tomorrow we'll have a discussion runner goes ball hit in the air to center charging as Dykstra can't get it and the ball bounces past him here comes Kelly to score and the Reds lead the ball game well, he got a late start on that ball and then it hit the wet turf and just skipped right by Lenny Dykstra it's not, it looked like he got a little leather on it see how they score it. Boone hits it right off the end of the bat and Dykstra broke back a little bit. Now he comes on in that wet turf soup skidded right past him was really backed up nicely by Incavillia. Single on an error on Dykstra single on an error. No RBI on the play. Reds take a 6 5 lead. Joe Oliver the batter now. Talking again about John Cruck, he said, I think I'll be ready for tomorrow. We'll have a discussion with Lee and Jim as the intentional walk comes up here. He says, the only thing right now is that my legs are a little stiff, but I felt like this after three days in spring training, he said. I guess right now I'm day to day. I'll stay with the club from now on, but it's up to them to activate me. They've already told me that they're not going to activate me to sit on the bench. Later in the game now, the Phillies down by a run. They're going to walk the eight hole hitter. And uh, Howard's going to come out and bat for Shurik. Howard's a switch hitter. 
And Howard was in the starting lineup yesterday for Cincinnati and reached base three times, twice on singles and once on a walk. Thomas Howard. According to Davey Johnson, talking with him before the ball game, he said Howard had a tremendous spring for Cincinnati. And Davey's been looking for spots to use Thomas Howard as frequently as he can. Oh, Pete Shurick and his debut did a nice job for the Reds. Worked one shutout inning. Thomas Howard batting at 400, two hits and five at bats. And the Phillies with left-handed hitters coming up in the seventh. It's going to be McElroy coming in for the Reds. Incidentally, tomorrow, Lee Thomas, Jim Fregosi, and Kruk and Dr. Philip Barone will sit down tomorrow morning and make a decision as to when Kruk will be activated. Kruk has treatment tomorrow at 8 o'clock in the morning. No balls and two strikes on pinch hitter Thomas Howard. As of now, this is an unearned run for the Reds. Yeah, they've gotten both their runs with two outs, too, after it looked like Juden might get out of this inning. Howard strikes out to end the inning. But the Reds come on to take the lead now with two in the inning. One of them will be unearned. Three hits, one error, and two men left on base. Harry Callis and Rich Ashburn return in the seventh at 6-5 Cincy. After six innings of play at Cincinnati six and the Phils five. Be here Thursday at 730 for the Flyers season finale as the Flyers against the New York Rangers only on PHL 17. Chuck McElroy the new pitcher. For Davey Johnson. Here in the seventh inning with the Reds leading at six five. Lenny Dystra is two for three this afternoon. One ball and two strikes to Dystra. Chuck McElroy appearing in his third game, one inning of work, two strikeouts, and one walk. He is. Not giving up a hit or a run so far this season. A little bit high, it's two and two. Pete Sherrick working one inning in his first appearance in a Reds uniform no hits and no runs and a strikeout on a walk two balls and two strikes to Lenny Dykstra beats the ball on the ground it's a fair ball and Al Morris will make the play himself so Dykstra is retired one down. That'll bring up Mariano Duncan. Duncan has single line to right. And he has struck out. Chase is the high pitch. One strike to Duncan. a little bit wide. One on one. Talking lifetime against McElroy is two out of six. Fouls it out of play. One ball and two strikes. Out 
side. It's two and two. McElroy has a good fastball and a pretty good slider. He doesn't throw much else, but he throws them hard and decent control. Jeff Duncan with an off-speed pitch. That's two down. It's kind of a long slider or a short curve, whatever it was. It fooled Duncan. That almost a curveball drop low. Yep. Backdoor breaking ball. And here's Darren Dalton. He's hit a three run homer, has struck out and singled. Two quick strikes to Dutch Dalton. Dalton just one for 12 lifetime against McElroy. Two strikeouts in the inning for McElroy. Phillies are down and turn in the seventh. No runs, hits, errors, and none left. Stretch time at Riverfront. We go to the bottom of the seventh. Cincinnati leads the Phils six to five. Here's our Chevrolet game summary. Darren Dolan's three-run homer in the first had the Phillies off and running, but Jeff Juden walked. Three batters in a row to lead off the game. He wound up balking in a run also in that first inning. Cincinnati leading there 4 3. Phillies regained the lead on two runs in the fourth on a wild pitch and an RBI single. And three hits and a Dykstra error put the Reds back in the lead in the sixth. Well, it's 6 5 Cincinnati here in the bottom of the seventh as Tony Fernandez leads it off and breaks his bat, hits a ground ball to deep short. Stocker bounces the throw but didn't get it. Infield single for Tony Fernandez. Just barely beat this ball. Stocker had to go over in the hole. He tried bouncing the throw over there, kind of an off balance throw. It very close. I think he did have it. Yep. I think it was accurately called by Charlie Williams. Yep. And the batter will be Barry Larkin, who has walked and twice grounded out. Slocum's given up three hits since coming on. None of them hit particularly hard, but costly hits. One ball and no strikes to Larkin. Two and nothing. Like to play hit and run with Larkin, so Larkin looking down at Ray Knight, his third base coach. There goes the runner. It was hit and run. Strong throw by Dalton right on the money. Fernandez got a pretty good job too, but just a great throw by Darren Dalton to Kevin Stocker for out number one. This is a perfect throw, and he really had some mustard on it right down there where he could make the tag. Wow, that's just a great throw. Two balls and a strike to Barry Larkin. Good fastball. Two and two. Slocum is not an easy pitcher to hit and run on because his ball has so much movement on it. Just spoils a pitch, fouls it off down the first base side. Two balls and two strikes to Barry Larkin. Mm -hmm. 
checked on a low slider a full count. Still three and two to Larkin. His average as he stands in there at the plate is 100. Two for 20. Oh. One of those hits was a game winner in this series. First game. Friday night in the 10th inning. Walked into the air to center. Not real deep. Lenny Dykstra makes the grab. That's two down, and that'll bring up Hal Morris. Morris has walked, grounded out, and doubled. No strikes to Hal Morris. One on one. Two strikes. I get two and two. He flipped Slocum. Came in in the sixth inning. Ground ball hit to Mickey Moore and beat him. Morris retired. So are the Reds in the seventh. No runs, one hit, no errors, and none left. We go to the eighth inning. Cincinnati leads the Bill 6-5. Today's Phillies game on PHL 17 is brought to you in part by a winning team, the championship Phillies, and the award-winning lineup of new cars and trucks at your local Dodge dealer. And by Pico Energy. There's a new kind of energy around here, Pico Energy. Dave Hollins leads it off for the Phil's eighth inning. He's grounded out, struck out, and been hit by a pitch ball. One strike, McElroy in his second inning. In relief of Pete Shurick. One ball to one strike. Collins is two for five lifetime against this 26 year old left hander. Fouls it out of play, one and two. back up and just below us. Thomas Howard after pinch hitting stayed in the game. You take Kevin Mitchell's place in left field. He'll bat where he pinch hit in the nine spot. McElroy batting in the four spot. One ball and two strikes. Lays off the high pitch. It's two and two. Ooh. A little bit high, full count. He swung at a couple of those, right about where that pitch was. Hard ground ball, but Ad Larkin. And he retires Hollins. That's one down here in the eighth. It'll bring up Pete Incavillia. Just swung at another one. That was a little bit high.
Incavilia has struck out, singled, and struck out. Reds lead 6 5 here in the eighth inning. Missing with a change up, one and nothing. Fouls it out of play. One ball and one strike to Incavilia. Two and one. Hit deep down the line, but a foul ball. Hit one in right field yesterday afternoon. Two balls and two strikes to Incavilia. Foul tip struck him out. Third strikeout for Chuck McElroy. That's two down, and it will bring up Jim Eisenreich. It's a good pitch, that breaking ball. It was probably a little low. Too close to layoff. Eisenreich is grounded out, singled, and grounded sharply back to the mound, and he beats a foul at home plate. No balls and a strike to Eisenreich. Jeff Brantley gets up in the Reds bullpen. One and one. Two and one. Balls and two strikes. Change up hit on the ground to Morris, and he'll make the play himself. And the Phillies are down in order in the eighth. No runs, hits, errors, and none left. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Reds lead the Bills 6-5. First homestand of Veteran Stadium brings to the vet Colorado, Cincinnati, and Los Angeles. The Rockies in tomorrow for the home opener. It'll be sold out. Then Wednesday and Thursday, plenty of tickets available. Night games against Colorado at 7:35. Cincinnati moves in next weekend, 7:35. Friday the 15th, Saturday the 16th. Photo balls for all youngsters, 14 and under. That's a 7:05 start time. Sunday the 17th at 1:35. Replica of the championship ring on a keychain for all youngsters on Sunday. Chuck McElroy leads it off, batting for himself here in the bottom of the eighth. Dodgers come in on Monday, a week from tomorrow at 7.35, and then our first business person special on the 19th. And that will be at 105. Four tickets call 463-1000. One on one, the count to Chuck McElroy. He's a pretty good hitting pitcher. He's seven for 22 lifetime, hitting a 318. He hits it to deep left center field, and Dykstra tracks it down at the warding track. As I say, he's a pretty good hitting pitcher. Lenny had a good jump on that ball. It's a good thing he did because he had to haul that in. Way over there in left center in the warning track. And good play. That'll bring on Reggie Sanders. He has singled, lined out, and lined out. One strike. it 
deep right center field, and this ball takes one hop and over the fence, a ground rule double for Reggie Sanders. He's hit it hard all day. Ball was in the air a long time. Thought maybe somebody might get it, but they really didn't get that close to it. Well, you saw Lenny back off, and he, I think he thought Eisenreich was coming in there. It'll bring on Roberto Kelly. He's two out of three with a pair of runs batted in. He knocked in the tying run of this game of the sixth. Reds lead by a run, 6-5 here in the bottom of the eighth. One ball and no strikes to Kelly. Chase the low pitch. One and one. to the line and right and it's a fair ball Sanders will score and Kelly is second with a double a ground rule double back to back ground rule doubles and the Rebs now lead by two seven to five hit that right off the end of the bat did Kelly dumped it in there though sometimes you make a good pitch and it costs you Exactly what happened there. Fan reached out, caught it. Here's Brett Boone. He's two out of three. Roger Mason quickly gets up in the Phillies bullpen. field Jim Eisenreich makes the grab Boone's retired that's two down and will bring up Joe Oliver Oliver's 0 for 2 with a couple of ground outs he's also been intentionally walked Roger Mason throwing scheduled to hit for the Phils in the ninth inning Mickey Morandini Kevin Stocker and a pinch hitter for Slocum Right hand bats on the bench include Ricky Jordan and Kim Baptiste, Tom Marsh, and Todd Pratt. Chuck McElroy, the left hander, will be coming out in the ninth inning. One strike to Joe Oliver. Kelly. He had a big lead. Slocum saw it, but neither Stocker nor Morandini were paying much attention to him. No balls and two strikes. Is 
able to get a huge lead again. This time Stocker sneaks in. That ball goes <coughs> through Dalton. But he picks it up and Kelly has to say it's second one and two. One ball and two strikes to Oliver. Reds have scored a run here in the eighth. They lead by two now, seven to five. There he goes. But Oliver chases a high fastball, missed it, and he struck him out. That'll retire the Reds who score a run. Two hits, no errors, and one left. We go to the ninth inning. Cincinnati seven and the Phillies five. After eight innings of play, it's Cincinnati seven and the Phillies five. Tonight at seven, Reno risks everything for his father on Renegade, only on PHL 17. Kim Baptiste will bat for Mickey Moore and Dini to lead things off for the Phils here in the ninth inning. Baptiste is one for four. It was a pinch single. As a pinch hitter, he's one out of one, facing Chuck McElroy here. McElroy has retired all six that he's faced, three of them by means of a strikeout. One and nothing to Baptiste. He'll be followed by Kevin Stocker. And then another pinch hitter. One ball and one strike. Line drive into right field. Is it caught? It is caught. What a great catch by Reggie Sanders. Great diving grab by Sanders, taking a hit away from Kim Baptiste. Now, if it had that one run lead, he may have played that safe. But the two run lead, I guess he could gamble, and he got it. That, uh, that was a very nice defensive play. Cincinnati has thrown some leather at the Phillies in this series. They've made some superb defensive plays. One strike to Kevin Stocker, who's nothing for two with an intentional walk. Ricky Jordan has moved into the on deck circle to bat for Heath Cliff Slocum. Two quick strikes to Kevin Stocker. Play like that really gives your ball club and especially the pitcher a lift. He pops it up into shallow right field. This will be easy for Sanders. He makes the grab for out number two. And it's up to Ricky Jordan to keep this game alive. Jordan is hitting at 261. Mariano Duncan played first base this afternoon. Ricky Jordan sitting this one out. Jordan has been a pretty good hitter against McElroy. Two for three lifetime. Looks at a strike. Round ball hit to Brett Boone, and this should be the ball game. It is. Cincinnati has swept this series. First time since September 18th of 92 that the Phillies have been swept in a three-game series. The Phillies were not swept at all in a three-game set last year. Chuck McElroy retired all nine that he faced and earning a save in this game. The ex Phil pitch fine baseball, nine up and nine down. As the Reds sweep this three-game series 7-5. So the first road trip of the year for the Phillies starts out great. It ends badly. They'll sweep the Rockies at Colorado and are swept by the Reds here at Cincinnati. We'll be back with the totals and a recap in just a moment. Back at Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati, our Chevrolet player of the game is Chuck McElroy, who earned his first save of the year. McElroy faced nine batters, retired all nine, struck out three. Well, the X-Phil was very sharp in three innings of work. 
Here at Riverfront, he was aided with a great defensive play by Reggie Sanders on Kim Baptiste Ball to lead off the ninth inning. For the winning Cincinnati Reds, seven runs, nine hits, no errors, and four left. For the Phils, five runs, eight hits, one error, and four left. The win goes to Pete Shurick. He's 1-0. The loss to Jeff Juden. He is 0-1, and McElroy earns his first save. Darren Dalton hit a three-run first inning home run in this game, but the Reds came back to score four in the bottom half of the first as Juden walked the bases loaded before getting a double play ground out by Mitchell, but then three straight singles, and Cincinnati took the lead at 4-3. So the Reds sweep this series. First time the Phillies have been swept since September of 92 in a three-game series. 7-5 final today, and we'll be back with more right after this.